Greetings and salutations. Hey besties. All right, look, I am well aware that probably no one will watch this video. I'm well aware that my my audience is here for reading vlogs about Percy Jackson books, like my audience are Percy Jackson fans. And I love that. I love you guys for that. So I'm well aware this video may flop, but one of my favorite book trilogies, book series, books, multiple books in a thing is finishing in a couple weeks. We're having the third book come out and it's a trilogy of a loop. So I really want to do a reading vlog for the last book when it comes out, but I've actually only ever read these books one time. And for the first book, especially, it's been years since I read it. So I wanted to reread them anyway. And I figured why not do reread vlogs for these before I do a reading vlog when the new one comes out. And maybe I can introduce some people who haven't read these books to these books, because I feel like you guys would like them and if any of you know them that's lovely and if anyone finds me through these then hi welcome i'm ashley i'm quite annoying i like percy jackson and books and taylor swift and disney and marvel so today we're going to begin rereading carry on now if you're someone who hasn't read carry on uh and you maybe want to uh, pause this video because i will just obviously be rereading and going completely into spoilers but i really recommend this book it is gay harry potter it is just gay Harry Potter with vampires. And if you're gay and you love this book as well, come along with the journey with me. I'm excited. Are you excited? Come on in, the water's fine. I have a lot of energy. I've had three coffees today. I apologize. Also, we're using my little Rapunzel bookmark. I could cast a hurry up on the train, but that's a chancy spell at the best of times. And my first few spells of the school year are always especially dicey. That's what I'm like with essays. Whenever I started a new school year, especially in English class, the first essay of the year would always be my worst. And it'd always be like, I'm so sorry. I've just forgotten how to write. And usually I'd still get like a fine grade on it, but it would 100% be my worst piece of work for the year because I don't know if anyone else has this. Does anyone else just forget how to like be a student after like a month break or anything? Or am I just an idiot? Let me know. Baz was sure I'd singed off his eyebrows, but he looked fine to me. Not a hair out of place. Typical. All right, Simon. All right. The upper years, that's me now, Wear green blazers with white piping, plus red jumpers if we want them. Capes are optional too. I've never worn one, they make me feel like a tit. But Penny likes them. Says she feels like Stevie Nicks. Penny is the best character in these books, you will just see that. I, oh, I do love Baz. I love Simon too. I love Agatha too. Penny is the superior character. We've been new, this is the first instance of it. Also, she feels like Stevie Nicks. Penny ain't straight either. Sharing a room with someone who wants to kill me, who's wanted to kill me since we were 11, has been... Well, it's been rubbish, hasn't it? My absolute favorite trope. Because like some enemies to lovers is a bit much for me. I'm not gonna lie. Some enemies to lovers is like, I think you reach a point where you can't redeem yourself with some of the ways that people treat each other in like enemies to lovers books. And I know that's part of the enemies part, but like I just do think it gets to a point where it gets very toxic and I don't enjoy it even in fiction. Fun, redeemable enemies to lovers or just rivals to lovers. Rivals who maybe try to kill each other once or twice to lovers. That's my shit. I put the mage on this list when I was 12 too, and there's been plenty of times when I thought I should take him off. Like in our sixth year when he practically ignored me. Every time I tried to talk to him, he told me he was in the middle of something important. That sounds a bit fucking familiar, doesn't it? There are a lot of direct parallels to Harry Potter in this novel, and I don't know if the author has ever explicitly stated or denied the fact that this was clearly like based off of Harry Potter. But I mean, when I first read Fangirl, like pretty much everyone who read Fangirl back in 2013-ish, I think, 2014-ish, I don't know, somewhere around there, I fully thought Carry On was just Harry Potter, but with they couldn't, you know, get the licensing to say Harry Potter, so it was something else. And then I got really excited when this book was published and I read it and, you know, it is its own thing very much so. It's one of my favorite books ever. It's very clearly based off of Harry Potter. Like you're just, that's very clearly Harry and Dumbledore, you know? There are direct influences whether they want to admit it or not, but I'm not mad about them. I understand why Simon is trying not to think of Agatha now and why he probably wouldn't have wanted to think of her over the summer and just how he's feeling about Agatha after seeing her with Baz. But even beforehand when he would be like, I wasn't thinking about Agatha because I had convinced myself she was too good to be true. I'm pretty sure Simon is canonically bisexual or pansexual. I could be wrong. We'll find out during these rereads, I guess. I can't really remember, but from, from memory, he's canonically bi or pan. Like I don't think he's completely gay, but that still sounds like a bit of a compact crush with Agatha there. If you are like, I'm not gonna think about my girlfriend because she's too good to be true. Little bit of compact that sounds to be. Penelope just wanting to, to grab Simon and take him away and protect him. 
and just spell them away so they can live to, you know, maybe 19 or 20. Taking him away so he doesn't have to face the, the consequences of this world that is clearly eating him alive. But knowing that she can't, because obviously there would be no world of, you know, majors to get back to, but her just having that desire just makes me happy. I really love Penelope. I think she's just the biggest sweetheart and I love how protective she is over Simon. She really notices that he's not doing well even when he's stating otherwise and she really cares about him and she hates what this world is doing to him and she hates what this war is doing to him. I think a lot of the times in stories about like the chosen one sometimes the supporting friends and characters obviously they care about them but they can get a little caught up by the mysticism of being a hero as well. And Penelope just doesn't. She she just cares about Simon so deeply. Penelope sits on the table with her feet on a chair because she likes to pretend she doesn't care. Sounds a bit gay as well though, not being able to sit on a chair. Mm, that sounds a bit familiar. I forgot that all the spells are like songs. I forgot that, that's such a cute little detail. I can contact him if I need to. I have his mobile number. Also, I could send a bird. That has the same energy as that um, like Team Thor short that they did for Civil War when they were filming Ragnarok, where they had that part where Thor is like, he could have sent me an email. And Bruce is like, do you have a computer? And he's like, no, but he could have sent a raven. <laughs> Simon nearly going off at the mage just immediately because he's like, hey, you need to leave. And Simon's like, no, don't want to. I'm proud of you, baby. Yeah. Go the fuck off. As someone who really, obviously I don't have a real fictional world to escape to, but I always really relate to main characters and like heroes and stories like Harry or Percy or Simon, when they kind of think of their school or camp or whatever as their one true home and they, you know, look forward to going all year and whatever. That's me with these fictional worlds. And so I really relate to the concept of being so terrified of someone taking them away like that's how it felt when i was a kid and someone my parents would punish me by taking away the books i was reading especially with my home life like it felt like they were taking away like my lifeline and my little bit of happiness so i really relate to that fear that simon has of i just got here this is my last chance to be here don't take this from me and i love that he stood his ground and like literally went off we've been together for three years now since we were 15 but i wanted her long before that I've wanted her since the first time I saw her, walking across the great lawn, her long pale hair rippling in the wind. I remember seeing her and thinking that I'd never seen anything so beautiful. I'm so lonely. <laughs> Obviously I don't ship Simon and Agatha together, but like anyone want to see me for the first time and think that about me, perhaps? No one would. I'm not deserving of someone thinking that about me, but like still, for the romance of it. Lucky me, he said, unlucky everyone else. This place isn't about sharing knowledge. It's about keeping knowledge in the hands of the rich. You mean the most powerful. Same difference. He's not wrong. I honest to God can't really remember what Lucy's saying, what Davy's deal is, what that whole arc ends up being. I remember very little of this book. I genuinely do not think I've read it for at least four years, but I've read it once. So my memory of it is quite hazy because I'm sure a lot of you relate to reading a book and then immediately forgetting 90% of it. Davy seems to have a point so far, just that first little interaction of them talking and everything he was saying about how you should teach people with lesser power how to use their magic because you shouldn't only teach a poet how to read. That all makes a lot of sense to me. Am I gonna regret thinking this and relating to him and agreeing with him? I feel like I will, but that's where I'm at. Simon Snow was also afraid of horses. Everyone who's ever made fun of me for being afraid of horses, fuck you, because Simon Snow was also afraid of horses. Being afraid of horses is valid. Simon Snow was on my side about this. But Simon, we have to, I mean, shouldn't we talk about this? I'd rather just move on, I say. It's not important. Let's just... Agatha, it's so good to see you. That's really not healthy, guys. Please talk about this. Agatha is so correct that they should talk about it. I think this is clearly showing that Simon's already like, maybe struggling with his feelings for her. I feel like he should care a lot more about this. <laughs> he should be a lot more heartbroken about this and wanting to talk it through. I don't know if I'm self-projecting. I can't remember if maybe he is really, really super in love with Agatha here, but I feel like he's already sort of in love with Baz in his head and he just hasn't realized it. And he's telling himself that he's in love with Agatha because that's what he thinks he should be doing. And obviously he did used to have feelings for her. I don't know if I'm projecting onto him. I could be. Again, we will see. But it isn't that. It isn't self-defense. I just don't love Simon enough. 
I don't love him the right way. Maybe I don't have that sort of love in me. Maybe I'm defective. And if that's the case, I may as well stand by Simon, shouldn't I? If that's where he wants me. Agatha. My heart genuinely just breaks for Agatha through the entirety of every book. I really, really feel for her and I just want to give her a hug. I just want to wrap her up in the biggest hug because I feel like she's just kind of always going through it. I just want to tell her that like, it's okay. You don't have to feel pressured into feeling any type of way. You can be exactly who you want to be and that is enough and you should be okay with that. Please don't listen to your parents. Please don't listen to Simon. Please don't listen to expectations. Just chase whatever makes you happy, babe. You deserve that. Hey besties, look where we are once again. It got dark, we need all the ring light. So we're in the reading spots. The mage eliminated school fees when he took over and threw out the oral presentations and power trials to get in. Literally anyone who can speak with magic can attend Watford now, no matter their strength or skill. Even if they're half troll on their mother's side or more mermaid than mage. The school had to build another hall of residence fraternity house just to make room for everybody. Okay, I like that I approve of that credit where credit is due. I appreciate that. I do. That's a good move. I didn't care if magic was real at that moment because roast beef and Yorkshire pudding are fucking real as rain. That's a big mood. I I come from an English family. Roast Sunday dinners were a thing. Um, haven't had one since I moved out, obviously. Uh, really miss them. Cause this is making me quite hungry and craving like a little Sunday dinner. Baz is gone and like missing for way longer than I thought he was. I don't know why in my brain it was only like a week. I think it's because it's not actually that long of the book until we find out where he is. But like I, in my head it was either like a week, maybe two. He's been gone for six weeks at this point. So people should be looking for this boy. Like there should be search parties out for this kid. I can tell you, she says, that it's school policy to contact the student's parents when a child doesn't return for the term. I mean, I'm glad that they've at least contacted his parents, but still, I feel like people should really be looking for this kid. I feel like there should be search parties out. Being gone long enough to be labeled mi a missing person. But you can't just ignore it when a student doesn't come back to school. What if he's planning something? Scratch the planning something part of that. You can't just ignore it when a student doesn't come back to school. I agree. If he's not come back to school and his parents are aware but don't seem all that bothered, I don't know, I feel like maybe you should just notify someone. Maybe you should be like, hey, this person's gone and missing and that's unusual for them. Maybe we should go look for them. The blood on Baz's cuffs. The fact that he could see in the dark. He'd come back to a room at night and dress for bed without ever turning on the light. In Baz's defense, I can do that. I used to read in the dark as a kid, which is why I need glasses now, I'm pretty sure, but it also means that I can see in the dark pretty well. Doesn't mean he's a vampire. The dead rats that they then mention in the chapel basement, bit more, bit more insightful, and you know, the blood in his cuffs. They're, they're bigger red flags than seeing in the dark. Really, Snow? That's your plan? Wait for me to kill someone? You're the worst chosen one who's ever been chosen. Fuck off, I said. I love flirting. The key to casting a spell is tapping into that power. Not just saying the words, but summoning their meaning. Which means you have to have a good vocabulary to do magic. And you have to be able to think on your feet. And be brave enough to speak up. And have an ear for a solid turn of phrase. And you have to actually understand what you're saying. How the words translate into magic. Yeah, it's a bit complicated. I don't know how great I'd be at magic in this in this universe. I'm pretty good with words. I'm pretty wordy. I'm, I'm a good writer. Uh, English was my English and drama were my best subjects in school. I'm pretty decent with words, but I don't know. I'm not very quick on my feet, so I don't know how great I'd be with magic in this world. I think I'd be a lot better if I just had to like memorize a bunch of spells from someone else and just remember them and cast on them and the meaning. I think having to focus and remember specific phrasings and also remember the magical meanings and all of that is just that uh, would be a bit much, a bit complicated. I'm a bit too stupid for it, I think, honestly. I don't remember when I learned to talk, but I know they tried to send me to specialists. I went to specialists for my speech stuff as a kid, not because I didn't talk, but because I had like a speech impediment. I can't remember if it was a stutter or what, but you can hear it sometimes. It comes out more so when I'm reading. I used to do reading lives on my TikTok. I stopped doing them because I got really insecure and I get insecure a lot when I'm editing these about what I sound like when I'm reading because I can hear it coming out again. It's it's generally okay when I'm talking normally, but it, it comes out really bad when I read. Uh, fun fact. I know you could, Simon, but the situation is very delicate right now because you know that it's delicate. The humdrum may be more powerful than ever, but you're more powerful than ever too. Remember that. I can't remember if he knows, but that sounds like he knows. I don't know if he does though. I didn't think he did. 
But that sounded, I don't know, maybe just sounded like he was hinting at something. But Agatha seems to be ignoring us both, again, still. We haven't spent any time alone since our argument. Honestly, it's been a relief. It's one fewer person asking me if I'm okay. Your girlfriend not talking to you and not spending alone time with you should not be a relief. There are some red flags here, Simon. Please notice them. The mage, Agatha says. I heard mother talking to a friend from the club. He's been raiding magicians' houses looking for dark magic. Yeah, that's a bit shady. I would not be happy if the mage just went through my attic. I don't think Simon and Agatha are in love. Correct, Penelope. You're very, very right. You've hit the nail on the head there. Everyone can see it except for them, and I honestly feel very, very bad for them about it because being stuck in a relationship where you're not in love with each other doesn't sound fun. It just doesn't. It's not fun. I know that Basil, I don't know, thinks about me, or at least thought about me, that he used to watch me, especially when I was with Simon. I know that he hated what Simon and I have and wanted it that he'd do anything to get between us. Buzz was always there, cutting in at every dance, teasing me away from Simon, then just teasing me, disappearing, sneaking away. I played along sometimes. Maybe I should be grateful that Buzz never called my bluff. Bestie, I'm so sorry. Are you in the right headspace to receive news that could potentially hurt you? Bestie, I'm so sorry. I don't know how to tell you this, but Bestie. You just want a happy ending. Merlin, Agatha, don't you? No, I don't. I want to be someone's right now, Simon, not their happily ever after. I don't want to be the prize at the end, the thing you get if you beat all the bosses. You're twisting everything, you're making it ugly. She shrugs again. Maybe. Agatha. I hold my hand out to her, the one that isn't holding Baz's handkerchief. We can fix this. Probably, she says but I don't want to. Finally, some communication between the two of them. Also, I actually do agree with Agatha. I, while I definitely, hopeless romantic, want to spend my life with someone, want to get married, blah, blah, blah. I want to be a wife, want to be someone's bitch. I want all those things. I want to be someone's future. I don't want someone to ever be with me and only be with me because it makes sense in the future. That's horrible. I want someone to be with me right now. And I completely really relate to that. I feel like I've been with people who maybe had that mentality of like, this will be good in the future, but they didn't really care for me in those moments. That's really painful. And so I really, really feel for her. Once again, I just want to give Agatha a hug like all the fucking time. I know she's doing the wrong thing by like hoping to see her boyfriend's enemy behind her boyfriend's back. But I do really sympathize with her. And at least she's being honest now and trying to break up with him, trying to end it with, with Simon now. At least she's doing the right thing here. We were settled we were sorted we were endgame but we're endgame archie <laughs> i'm so sorry her sadness is so potent that in that moment i'd do anything to get him back for her i'd do anything to bring him back interesting there simon you broke up why i don't know i think she's in love with baz i don't know if she's the one who's in love with baz simon buddy i know that face as well as my own baz i stand up too quickly knocking my chair over across the room a mug falls to the floor and shatters I glance over and see that Agatha is standing too. Baz steps towards us. Maybe you're both in love with Baz. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you're both a little bit in love with Baz there, buddy. Bless, like, Baz's aunt, but also, that's so mean. The front seat is the people who've never been kidnapped by bloody numpties, Jesus Christ, Baz. That's so mean. He's been tortured for six weeks. Parade him a bit later. Let him get home first before you shame him for being kidnapped by numpties. Come on. Baz and Simon both noticing that the other is thinner than usual and looks sickly because they worry about each other and care about each other even if they're not ready to say it yet. Mm-hmm. Everything to me. She smiles at me sadly. Don't kill Baz tonight. I won't. But I'm probably going to have to kill him someday and we both know it. This dynamic, it speaks to me. Thank you, Snow. You're looking rough and weedy yourself. I am, and it's his fault. How was I supposed to eat and sleep knowing he was out there pulling against me? And now he's here, and if he's not going to tell me anything useful, I might as well throttle him for putting me through it. Or I could do my homework. I love that clearly Simon was just worried out of his mind for Baz, but he just does not understand that that's what was happening. So the only way he can, like, really admit it to himself or even comprehend it or acknowledge it or just rationalize what he's feeling to himself is oh i was worried that baz was out there plotting to kill me because i don't believe that simon still thinks that's the case i don't believe that simon still deep down believes that that's what's happening here obviously baz knows it's not like i just don't think simon really believes that baz is actually out to kill him anymore he just doesn't know what to do with 
the feelings that he has for Babs and it's easier to, to think of them as I'm worried about the fact that we're mortal enemies and blah 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 it's way easier to deal with than fuck I think I might actually care about this guy. We've got the dance all worked out after so many years moving around the room without touching or talking or looking at each other or at least not looking at each other while the other is paying attention. I roll over onto my side facing snow. He's sleeping, so it doesn't matter if I stare at him, which I do, even though I know it doesn't do me any good. <laughs> not to, not to like say watching people in their sleep is fine. Like we've been over, we had the whole twilight craze. We know as a society that people watching you sleep probably isn't the, but this is very different. This is fine. This is him watching his roommate sleep. It would be a little bit creepy if he was a stranger, but like they know each other. They know each other, this is romantic. I'm choosing to think it's romantic. He's not breaking into Simon's room to watch him sleep like Edward was. It's a different situation. And I'm gonna say that it's romantic and cry about it, cause I can. And when I felt myself slipping too far, I held on to the one thing I'm always sure of. Blue eyes, bronze curls. The fact that Simon Snow is the most powerful magician alive. That nothing can hurt him, not even me. That Simon Snow is alive and I'm hopelessly in love with him. Look, I might cry. My biggest like kink in a book ever is someone like slipping kind of close to death or losing themselves in some capacity and clinging to like just just thinking of one person and clinging to that image of them and their love for that person and holding on for that because of their love for that person. That's everything to me. That's Good God, that's my, that's my everything. That's my absolute favorite fucking trope. That is everything to me. That is everything to me. Can someone feel like that about me, please? Anyone want to get dangerously close to death and just cling up? Maybe not. Actually, I don't think I would like this at all. Don't do this. Not unless we somehow find ourselves in the fantasy world together and then we can. Like, if you want to take a dip into the river sticks and hold on to the thought of me, sure. But maybe not like in this reality. Okay, so I was wrong. Maybe, maybe Bess had relatively recently actually tried to kill Simon, but for good reason. Simon was making him feel all these things. Not for good reason. No, don't kill people. But like, it's not like he was killing him just because he wanted him dead for just bitter reasons. He was... It was just confused about all the things he felt for Simon. It's romantic, it's okay. <laughs> Honestly, why is Simon still keeping his mo like Baz's mother visiting a secret? Like he keeps saying that he has to tell Baz about it, but why haven't you told Baz yet? That would have been like the first thing. It would have been like, we're bickering, cool, 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 cool. All right, shut up. I'm gonna go to sleep, but also first I have this thing to tell you because it's, even if Simon hates Baz, like Baz has a right to know. Even from a selfish point, shouldn't Simon just not want to carry that around? But like just Baz has a right to know, why wouldn't you tell Baz immediately? I don't know, I would. The first time I read this book, I remember being really bothered and annoyed by Agatha for a lot of it. And maybe that's me being an awful person and having a lack of sympathy, I don't know. I just didn't really understand where she was coming from initially, I don't think it took me I want to say about halfway through this this book and especially then through Wayward Son to really fall in love with her and this time reading it I just can't wrap my head around the fact that even these early passages in, in her early chapters, her early POV chapters, I'm like how could I read this and not have such sympathy and love for this character? I know that I didn't like her at the beginning of this book the first time I read it. I know that I didn't but I can't wrap my head around that now. I feel 15 again. I'm going to give in if it gets too close. Either kiss him or bite him. The only reason I got through that year was that I couldn't decide which of those options would finally put me out of my misery. Probably Snow himself would put me out of my misery if I tried either one. Those are my fifth year fantasies. Kisses and blood and Snow ridding the world of me. Low-key a big mood. My current life motto is I want someone to take me out either on a date or in a murder way. I don't really mind which. I was always allowed to touch her books. I was allowed to read any book as long as I put it back in its place and promised to ask if something confused or frightened me. That's such good parenting. That's honestly such good parenting. Rather than just cutting kids off from things that may be confusing to them, just make sure that they understand that if they come across anything that confuses them or frightens them, to ask about it. That's really good parenting. I say as if I know anything about parenting. I don't. I just, in theory, that's good parenting is what I should be saying. He stops pacing, then charges towards me, his hands reaching for my neck. And I'm more scared for him than I am for myself, even though I know he wants to kill me. 
because if he touches me, he'll be cast out. The fact that Simon is literally more concerned with Baz's like education and him making sure that he doesn't get expelled than the fact that Baz is actively going to choke him says a lot about Simon and how he feels about Baz. That's all I'm saying. Though he'd much prefer to catch me disrobing the maid. Definitely more disappointed in my queerness than my undeadness. Big mood. <laughs> because they attacked Watford, I roll away. Because she was your mother, he says. And they killed her in front of you, and that's... That's wrong. There's something so poignant and emotional about that interaction that I can't quite articulate. But like, I just got goosebumps all over. There's just something so inherently emotional and human about that specific phrasing. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, but... I'm having the feelings. <laughs> he slips his own wand out of the pocket inside his jacket and holds it between us. Then he takes my hand in his. He's cold, and I pull back out of reflex. He tightens his grip. Truce, Baz says, looking in my eyes. Truce, I say, sounding much less certain. <laughs> I fucking love them. I would literally die for these two. They're, like, this pairing are just everything to me. There's something so specific about this dynamic that is just everything to me all these moments of like every every moment they have where they interact and it's like romantic or whatever it's fantastic but these early moments where they're just kind of working out how to exist around each other and not be trying to kill each other but they're still like there's still so much banter and they're still really walking on eggshells i fucking love it he opens up his book bag and takes out a few apples and things wrapped in greaseproof paper eat he says throwing one at me it's a bacon roll he's also got a pot of tea what's all this I say, tea, obviously. I know you can't function unless you're stuffing yourself. I up the roll and decide to take a bite. Thanks. Baz knows all this already because he's just watched Simon. <laughs> it just seemed like your business. It is my business, Baz says. Right, so I didn't tell her. Now, where do we start? His face falls into a pout. I was counting on bumps to tell us where to start. Big mood, Penelope, best character, smartest character, everything to me. Penelope supremacy, I agree. No, I mean, it's okay that you're not okay. Whatever you're feeling is okay. He stands up, shaking off my hand. Is that what your friends tell you every time you blow up another chunk of school grounds? Because they're lying to you. It isn't okay, and it won't be. So far, it's only been a sign of more bad things to come. You won't be okay, will you, Snow? That specific interaction breaks my heart because what Simon says that it's okay to not be okay whatever you're feeling is okay it's something I say to my friends a lot and then I always feel like bad slow when people say it to me where I'm like well that's the one thing it is and it's okay maybe I should stop saying that to my friends maybe it doesn't work but I want them to know that what they're feeling is okay because I feel like it is valid for them but I don't feel like my own feelings are valid that's the thing but that interaction just felt like two halves of my brain going at each other and it was like oh I feel a little bit called out by this he floats out over the moat and lands on the other side. It's the prettiest thing I've ever seen. So you think Baz is the prettiest thing you've ever seen, huh, Simon? Me too. Honestly, me too. Baz is, Baz is a very beautiful, beautiful specimen. I agree. I forgot that the dragon fight is the first instance where Simon discovers that he can push his magic into other people, can amplify and help people out with his magic. I love that the first time he uses it is, is with Baz and it's, it's in this moment where they're not getting along but they still have the truce and they are fighting towards a a common goal um which is just to protect the school i guess even though it's more so protect the dragon peacefully for baz but i just love it i love the imagery of and i love the meaning I, I i just love the idea of simon having so much magic that he can't control it but him kind of ha being so overpowered in that way allows him to without really putting himself most of the time in too much danger lending some of that magic to other people um, and to his friends to help them remain strong when they're struggling i just think that's beautiful it's like a better idea of like bella's powers and twilight i think that's the second time i've referenced twilight in this video i need to be stopped it was attacking the school not because she wanted to dragons don't attack unless they're being threatened and dragons don't even live in this part of england baz has so much sympathy and compassion in his heart and i adore him so much this is why i'm going to beat you i say we're on a truce snow says i can still think antagonistically i'm thinking violent thoughts at you constantly i loved um, <laughs> the banter is just fucking god tier honestly top tier top tier banter everything baz says i just fall more in love with him he's everything to me he grabs my hand i want to pull it away but i don't want to look scared and also i don't want to pull it away bloody snow i'm thinking violent thoughts at him right now mm, they're everything to me now we're just sitting on my bed, holding hands, Simon Snow and I. 
I can't look at his eyes, so I stare at his cross. Honest to God, it makes me so angry that I'm not a fictional character living in a book. Like, the fact that, like, little interactions like this and stories like this and worlds like this don't exist in reality makes me so fucking sad. There's a big reason why I fell in love with escapism as a child and why I'm still so in love with escapism why it's my main coping mechanism why i love living in fictional worlds so much because i prefer them to the reality that i'm living in obviously i will probably never be the center of a story i'm not a main character i will never be a hero i will never have my own quest my own journey i will never be at the forefront of some incredible story that's just not on the cards for me i don't think i'm never going to be part of a great love story or any great story realistically and that's okay but god i just wish i could be a fictional character i wish i could live in a book i wish i wasn't real i wish that i could live in these worlds and exist in these worlds and be a part of the a story like this have these kinds of interactions have these be my romances <laughs> i don't know man i just wish i was a fictional character <laughs> this is why i'm a fucking cosplayer i'm a cosplayer <laughs> because i can't actually live in these stories so i pretend to be characters in these stories i've never heard of a magician taking someone else's magic can you imagine if there were a spell for that we tear each other apart. We're already tearing each other apart. I'm gonna have a meltdown! I know that that's not romantic, that phrase is not romantic at all, but god it is. I wonder if he's forgotten that he's holding my hands, or if he's forgotten what it means to hold hands, or if he's forgotten who I am entirely. Ashley Taylor died here on this day, cause of death, this chapter. I think again about pulling my hands away, but Snow could light fires in my palms at this point and I wouldn't pull away. It feels like he has. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I know Simon's a little bit annoyed at Agatha for implying that he shouldn't come over for Christmas when it's a big house, they could probably exist there and not see each other and Simon was looking forward to it, but I completely understand where Agatha is coming from as well. Agatha is very overwhelmed and confused and Agatha I think feels more out of place even than Simon does. I think Agatha's dealing with a lot of internal demons and her being able to go home for a couple weeks and just feel normal for a brief period of time, probably see her normal friends, just be around home, be around her family and not have to worry about that. It's probably a huge relief to her and having her ex-boyfriend who reminds her of everything that she wants to escape from probably isn't the best and it is her home. She does kind of have every right to be like, hey, I, I don't know if it is the best idea. Maybe it's a little bit selfish, but I think she's a teenager and she has a right to be a little bit selfish. Baz is right, Trixie the Pixie is a fucking awful name and I feel quite bad for her. You're suggesting I go home with you? Yes. For Christmas? Yes. With your family? Baz rolls his eyes. Well, it's not like you have any family of your own. You're mad. I move again towards the bathroom. How is it mad, he demands. I could use your help and there's nothing here for you. You'd think you'd appreciate the company. I stop at the door and turn back again. Your family hates me. Yes, and so do I. They want to kill me, I say. They won't kill you, you'll be a guest. I'll even cast the spell if you want, be our guest. I can't stay in your house, are you kidding me? Snow, we've lived in the same room for seven years. How can you have a problem with this? You're mad, I say, closing the door completely off his nut. They're gonna spend Christmas together, but Simon's just going home with him for Christmas. Like, I know that he does legitimately think it'll help the investigation, but also Baz inviting Simon home for Christmas. Baz knowing the dynamic he has with his family and inviting Simon home for Christmas. Baz telling Simon whether or not it's in, in the name of the truth, I don't really give a fuck, but being like, hey, I know that you saw me with Agatha, but it genuinely was not what you think. I want to legitimately clear the air here and tell you what was happening was she, she saw me feeding and I was asking her not to tell anyone. I don't want you thinking that this is a problem. I, I want to clear the air here. You can go and you can make up with her or whatever. It's just, I think that's a real example of Baz being a really, really kind-hearted, lovely person and you can really see him starting to really let his walls down and whether he's admitting it or not trying to form a real bond with Simon and beginning to really trust him. Are you saying you flirted with Agatha just to hurt me? Yes. You never cared about her? No. I grit my teeth and you think I want to hear that? Well obviously. Now you can make up with her and have the best Christmas ever. He's making a joke about it but I really respect this and I love him. I was trying to do Snow a favour. A favour that doesn't serve my interests at all. At all. <sighs> I bloody well should marry well, beloved. My father would love it. Marry her, give her the keys to whatever she wants keys to. 
and find a thousand men who look exactly like Simon Bloody Snow and break each of their hearts a different way. And he could break their hearts. Baz 100% could break their hearts, but oh my god. He's so smitten and so just, he's in just such teen, angsty teenage love with Simon and it's just everything to me. I love them so much. I truly do. Oh my god, I literally love them so much. But he's also right. He was trying to do him a favor that didn't serve his own interests and Simon wasn't very appreciative of it and I understand why Simon wasn't. But still, I know Simon and I will always be enemies. But I thought maybe we'd get to a point where we didn't want to be. Ouch. Oh, that hurt my heart so bad. The pain, the true pain of that phrase. Mm. He'd never do such a thing. Nikki didn't want to kill people. He just wanted to live forever. I can understand that. I can respect that. I think I would I would want that too. If, if vampirism was like a real option for me, I already am pale enough to look like a vampire. Death really freaks me out. She says as if she doesn't have severe depression, but like the idea of outliving anyone would also freak me out. So no, unless I could convince everyone I knew and cared about to also become a vampire, then maybe I wouldn't. Is saying happy Christmas an, an English thing? It used to bother me as a kid when I would see like t-shirts that said happy Christmas, because I'd be like, Merry Christmas. And my mom would watch like Philosopher's Stone and I'd be like, happy Christmas, Harry, happy Christmas, Ron. I'd be like, it's Merry Christmas. You say Merry Christmas, but they're saying happy Christmas too. Is it an English thing? I'm trying to think of if, my English friends say happy Christmas to me. I can't remember. Maybe they did. I'm trying to think of if my gran says happy Christmas either. I cannot remember. But if it is, then I f forgive everyone I've ever made fun of for saying happy Christmas. But it used to really piss me off as a kid. Well, I say, I'd better head back. Send a message if you hear more. You can try to call, but I don't think there's anyone answering the school phone over break. What? He scowls up at me. I said, send a message if you're not leaving now. I told you everything I know. Snow, you came in on the last train, and then you walked for an hour. You haven't eaten all day, and your hair's still wet. You're not going anywhere tonight. Well, I can't stay here. You haven't burst into flames yet. Baz, listen. He cuts me off with a hand. No. Mm, he cares about him so much. He, he wants him to... Also, realistically, Simon on some level must have known that he couldn't go back to Watford if he got immediately on that train. I know he wasn't thinking straight and he got immediately on that train to Baz, but he must have known by getting on that train immediately with no preparation, he wasn't going back to Watford. He's gonna stay there. Because it's death, I say. It clearly isn't. They say your soul dies. That's Tosh, he says. How would you know, Snow? Observation. <laughs> observation i say you can't observe a soul you can over time he says i think i'd know simon just defending the fact that that baz clearly has life within him and that he still has a soul and he's still a good person yes i agree correct i could knock him over right now kiss him kill him improvise i don't know whether i want to kiss you or kill you kisses please if you get that quote if you recognize it i absolutely fucking love you i look at his suit again and his shiny black shoes basil have you met a bloke he smiles and he's made of trouble we should have dropped him in the thames in a bag of stones we should have left him out for the fairies something like that <laughs> Oh god. The fact that I haven't read this book in so long means that like I don't have all of the ship moments memorized in the same way that I do with a lot of my favorite books and a lot of my like comfort ships and the ships that really like make me giddy. So it means that I get to read these little moments and these little quotes and like they give me the butterflies, they give me the good new ship interacting for the first time feelings and like obviously I know where they end up and I know that they become canon and whatever but it's still like exciting to read these moments because I'm not super familiar with them it's still very very exciting to read them and it's it's great well i'm not avoiding other girls penny says i'm avoiding other people big mood me <laughs> if my mom criticized me for like not having friendships that pass the Bechdel test although most of my close friends are women so i would but if if my mom criticized me for that i would say the same thing i'd be like i'm not avoiding girls i'm not avoiding female friendship i am avoiding everyone everyone's scary everyone makes my social anxiety go off no one wants to be my friend so it's not it's not a matter of being anti anti women it is a matter of being anti people did not remember that penelope's mom was friends with lucy i literally cannot remember anything about the lucy storyline this is very exciting this is brand new information to my brain because i've forgotten most of this book hmm. did not remember that davy was the mage fucking hell okay i wonder if this is why he's never had a girlfriend because he'd take her on dates to the library then insist on sitting there creepily while she ate dinner alone 
okay, I'm not down for the eating dinner alone thing. I have an eating disorder. I could not do it. However, dates to the library, big yes for me. Big yes for me. If Devaz was taking girls on dates to the libraries, um, I think he would definitely have a girlfriend by now. If he wasn't gay, I would volunteer to be said girlfriend because he's a very beautiful specimen and I want to go on dates to the library. <laughs> You're not a monster, I say. His face is cold as a corpse in my hand. I was wrong all those years. You're a bully and a snob and a complete asshole, but you're not one of them. Baz tries to jerk his face away, but I hold it fast. He opens his eyes in their pools of gray and black and pain. I can't stand it. I might cry for a couple hours, don't mind me. I would have someone just tell me I'm not a monster and like hold my face in their hands and be heartbroken at the pain in my eyes. I think my favorite ship dynamics are just ones where like one of them is maybe a little bit of an awful person and I've just realized exactly what it is I think. Some of my favorite, uh, not all my favorite ships because like my main, my main ship dynamic is like smart girl, golden retriever, dorky boy who's head over heels for smart girl. That's my go-to like male female ship dynamic. But one of my favorite like actual dynamics and one that I always gravitate towards is like a character who thinks of themselves as a monster or who blames themselves for things they didn't do or just has a lot of angst and drama and another character generally a more stereotypical hero just never believing any of that about them seeing them at their absolute worst and still seeing all the wonderful things about them and i think that's because i want someone to think that about me because i feel like wanda or like annabeth or like baz i feel like i have you know all the trauma weighing me down and i feel like it makes me a bit of a monster and i want like the hero to tell me that it's not true <laughs> he shakes his head and he's saying something and i think i might kiss him because I've never kissed anyone before. I was afraid I might fight. I've never wanted to kiss anyone but him. I won't fight. I won't hurt him. I've never wanted to kiss anyone but him. Shut up. I just want to kiss him, then go. Simon, I say. And then he kisses me. I actually forgot that Simon kissed him first. If Baz thinks I'm ever letting him go, he's wrong. I like him like this, under my thumb, under my hands, not of plotting and scheming and talking to vampires. I've got you now, I think. I finally got you where I want you. I'm gonna set myself on fire. <laughs> I'm going to die kissing Simon Snow. Simon Snow is going to die kissing me. <laughs> when I throw myself into the sun, what then? Simon Snow is still going to die kissing me, just not today. <laughs> I wonder how long he's wanted this. I wonder how long I've wanted it. I'd say that I didn't, but the possibility just now occurred to me for the first time. But if that's true, then why is there a list in my head of all the things I've always wanted to do to Baz? This book, and like specifically the romance in this book, reads like fanfiction in the best way. Like the way that Simon and Baz just kind of like speak about each other in their inner monologues is a way that I'm sure is probably quite present in YA, but I don't read much YA anymore. So for me, it reminds me a lot of like how people interact in the fan fictions that I read because I mostly read middle grade adult fiction and then a few scatterings of YA and this is one of the few little scatterings so maybe this is just like how YA romances read but for the most part I find YA romances really boring so I, I like you can give me recommendations I probably won't read them that's not my favorite one or I don't really enjoy them I enjoy this I enjoy this dynamic and so to me it feels like it reads like a fan fiction but like in the best it gives you all the like fluttery excitement of reading fan fictions with romances that you want but are definitely unrealistic for real life. That's how this reads. Sunlight burns me, I say. He shrugs. Me too. Big mood, Simon. You're an idiot, Snow. You called me Simon before. No, I didn't. Oh, I love them so much. I try not to think about being gay. About anything. I make lists of things not to think about. Why? Because, he says. It hurts to think about things that you can't have or help. It's better not to think about it. I feel very called out by this. I do have a list of things I specifically try very hard not to think about. Obviously it doesn't work. Trying to actively avoid thinking about things generally makes me think about them more, but just makes them more, not necessarily think about them more. I do like suppress them, but it means that they still do show up and I don't process them enough. So when they do pop up in my brain, which they inevitably do, they're painful for longer. Because I think of them less, it means the pain is extended. It's a very stupid thing that I do, but it's a thing that I do. I do also make lists of things not to think about. When I was younger, it was my sexuality because it freaked me out. I be a whole bisexual now. She figured it out. It took her a long time. She's very proud of it now. 
but my sexuality is to be on that list. I feel very called out by that. There's a mole on his cheek that I've wanted to kiss since I was 12. I do. <laughs> what is it with me and Chips who like, I've been in love with each other since they were 12? What is that? I'm still not sure what's happening between us. We kissed last night and this morning, a lot. Does that mean we get to do it today? Yes, you idiot. I hate gay people, yes. I can say I hate gay people, I am a gay people. He lets his hand fall and I catch it because I'm weak because I'm a constant disappointment to myself. Because he's standing right there with his tawny skin and his moles and his morning breath. Simon, I say. He squeezes my hand. It's not that I don't prefer this. It's that I sigh. I can't even imagine it. My family objects to everything the mage stands for. I don't even have words. I don't even have anything to articulate the the emotions that this book evokes within me. I just love it and I just want to cry about them all the time. No, Penny cuts him off. It wasn't the mage, Baz. It was the murderer. I thought it was numpties, Agatha says. I love Agatha so much. She's so precious. I just want to give her a hug. I also should have thought about their whole love triangle dynamic before I dragged Agatha to Baz's house, but the whole love triangle dynamic is so persistently stupid you can't blame me for blocking it out. And this is why Penelope is the best character. <laughs> I feel really bad for Baz. I understand why Simon did go. That's where he spent so many Christmases. Those are still his friends. And like Baz is right, he had spent the past 24 hours kind of telling Simon they weren't friends that the, the air wasn't completely clean between the two of them but I still feel really bad, bad for Baz. I completely understand why Baz was surprised that Simon did leave and why he's upset about it. I also understand why he's pretending he's not. I completely get where Baz is coming from 100%. Okay I take it all back I forgot that Simon came back. I love them. Simon saying he came back because he was scared that he, you know Baz would just pretend it never happened and he didn't want that to be the case. I have many feelings. I like you, I say. And I don't even care that you don't like me. I'm used to it. I wouldn't know what to do if you did. But I like you, Baz. I like this. I like helping you. I like knowing that you're okay. When you didn't come back to school this autumn when you were missing, I thought I was going to lose my mind. You thought I was plotting against you, he says. Yeah, I say. And I missed you. I fucking told you. This book is making me feel so lonely though. <laughs> I am living vicariously through the minute it's a good time, but I am also cripplingly lonely. It is what it is. If we were in a movie, one of us would have to die while Simon watched. That's all we're good for. It's not all you're good for in this reality, but you're correct that that would be your role in a film, but that doesn't mean that's all you're good for in the real world, Agatha. You're powerful and you have so much to offer and you can actually actively help. You don't have to. I don't want her to feel like she has to be involved in this because obviously she doesn't. Maybe it's selfish if she would just take the out and leave, but I would understand that. It's a lot of responsibility that she didn't sign up for, she's not prophesied for, she doesn't have to do it if she really doesn't want to. Maybe it's a bit selfish, but I don't think she has to. If she wants to help, she can be be a help. Not to be like mentally ill on main and I don't want to be like a bad influence but honestly the humdrum saying nothing I give them some of my nothing like him literally giving creatures some of his void that's what I feel like being friends with me is like I feel like I just poison everyone around me a little bit with my problem. <laughs> It's all right, I'm in therapy about it because it's obviously not true, I just believe that it's true. I'm in therapy, she's all right. But that's a really good analogy for it, I really, really relate to that sentence. Simon Snow is the humdrum, or the humdrum is Simon Snow. This is like the one main thing that I remember about this book. That's about it. I don't even remember the specifications, if I'm honest. I remember that, I remember one thing about the ending, and I remember being in love with Simon and Baz. Pretty much all my memory. So we've here, we've established the one thing. I'm glad that I remembered it correctly. <laughs> what you are is a fucking tragedy, Simon Snow. You literally couldn't be a bigger mess. He tries to kiss me, but I hold back. And you like that? <laughs> I love it, he says. Why? because we match. He's a best friend, he's the best friend he wanted. Just love them. They are le legitimately so personal to me. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's currently raining outside. I've been in a really bad depressive episode lately. Just, just really bad, not to overshare again. Reading in bed in a tailor sweater. Reading one of my favorite books at that in a tailor sweater with the rain outside and Percy Katz and my cat just curled up around and I've got plushes around me. It's really nice. 
these are these are little moments where I'm like, hey, maybe things aren't always the worst. Maybe things aren't always too much. Maybe maybe nice moments do exist. And I just thought I'd share that with you all. <laughs> I completely understand Simon being very preoccupied with the humdrum right now and with wanting to tell the mage what they figured out, even though he shouldn't tell the mage about it. I understand why, but him saying that there are more important things to to Baz, uh, being like there are more important things right now than finding your mother's killer dick move really should have thought about how that would sound to baz really should have used some brain cells before he spoke those words i genuinely did not remember that the mage was the one who had baz kidnapped but like still saw that coming i remembered that the mage was a bit of a fucking asshole so like that probably also was a clue i don't remember if i figured it out the first time i read it but i feel like i would i don't think it's it's not like it's a super obvious twist but the mage is just clearly very shady so it's it's just not that much of a surprise. I understand why Agatha goes to the mage. She thinks she's doing her part and helping by doing that. Obviously she wants to be free of this, but she still feels some responsibility to do something and to her doing something is telling the mage. However, I know it's easy for me with everything I know, with my grand old knowledge from all the different fucking characters and it being explicitly said that the mage is not a good guy to think you know, Agatha's being a bit of an idiot here, but I think Agatha's being a bit of an idiot here. I think she is choosing not to think too hard about anything because she doesn't want to be involved. And I think if she did think things through a bit more, she probably wouldn't get herself into this situation. Obviously it's not entirely her fault and I respect that she's doing what she wants to help, but like, babe, clearly the mage has some problems. Mm. I don't try to fight, what's the point? But I go limp and start to cry. Just because I knew I was going to die like this doesn't mean I'm ready for it. I wish I'd be nicer to my mum this morning. I wish I was wearing something other than leggings and Ugg boots. I always figured I'd make a more beautiful corpse. It's just painful. It's just upsetting. It's just upsetting. Agatha thinks so little of herself. She's just so unhappy. And I, d I want her to be happy. Everything about Agatha's character I just find really heartbreaking. I think just a little detail of Eb calling Agatha by name shows Eb is a lovely human being. The mage is not just that little note of Eb wouldn't know Agatha very well at all. Eb had probably seen Agatha less than the mage has. I know that Agatha visited Eb with Simon. I think it said explicitly, but even if it is, and I assume she did because it said explicitly that Penelope did at least, she probably still has seen her less than the mage has the mage is literally the headmaster and then also goes to Agatha's family events. He should be more familiar with her than he is and I just think that little detail of Eb calling her by name just shows the the difference between them as people. She's scared. I'm sorry for that. Yeah, this is making me upset. I decide the mage must be right even though he talks like a madman. I decide this is for the best. This is for a reason. I hope that someone remembers to bring the nannies home. Yeah, it's just really fucking sad, isn't it? No, I say, I'm going to end this. I'm sorry. You're sorry? I'm sorry that all the good stuff happened after I left you. I forgot how genuinely emotionally moving and how harrowing this book is. I don't know, it, it just, just hits me in all the very like personal spots, all the personal places. It's a time, it's a time, I'm having a time. It's not okay, the mage is dead. Why is he dead? I don't know why he's dead. I don't know what's happening. Maybe that's the only way he could stop hurting you. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> forgot how like close to home some of the ending of this, this novel weirdly hits. Mm. I have a lot of emotions and I don't know what to do with them. I don't know what to do with them. I don't really feel mm. Mm. many thoughts, much pain. Ah, well, I'll get you a little tomorrow then. I'll come back for your tea time. Watch out for numpties. That's Fiona's standard farewell for me now. I hate it. I fucking love Fiona. <laughs> I know I usually come down here to tell you I'm sorry, but I think today I want to tell you that I'm going to be all right. Don't let me be one of the things that keeps you from peace, mother. I'm all right. I legitimately didn't think I was going to be very emo- I didn't think this was going to be a very emotional reread re for me. Um, was incorrect. Evidently I was incorrect. Cool. He looks at my face and huffs, exasperated. Baz, you're actually literally the only thing I have to lose. So as long as doing gay stuff in public doesn't make you hate me, I don't really care. 
We're just dancing, I say. That's hardly gay stuff. Dancing's well gay, he says, even when it isn't through blokes. I like dancing. I've actually, fun fact, never slow danced with anyone in my life. It never occurred to me that that was like a thing, like a real thing most people did until like probably about a year ago where I just said it and someone was like, you've never slow danced? And I was like, oh, is this a normal experience people have? Where was my like, can I have this dance moment in High School Musical 3? Why didn't I get one of those? <laughs> She's obsessed with fairy tales and being a princess and she's never slow danced. Look at me go. Yeah, I forget how much um, my heart breaks for Simon towards the end of these. I forget how Simon just kind of completely changes as a character. And I think that's a very realistic response. I appreciate his character changing and him clearly struggling with the realities of what's happened after everything. Because I think it's one of the few novels or series where it, like the hero has a realistic response to what he goes through, to readjusting to life after what he's lost. And I really do appreciate that, but oh, Jesus Christ, does it break my little heart. I was 11 years old and I'd lost my mother and my soul and the crucible gave me you. It made us roommates, he says. I shake my head. We were always more. We were enemies. You were the center of my universe, I say. Everything else spun around you. When I scream, I actually cannot handle Baz saying that he chooses Simon. That's actually too much for me right now. That's it. I'm out. Too much. That's my fucking weakness. How did you bring my fall? I stopped the humdrum myself. Baz looks at his phone bored. Fell in love, didn't you? Penny groans and Baz starts laughing, trying not to crack a smile. I enjoyed that joke. I enjoyed that joke a lot. Go on then, he says. Carry on, Simon. I love this novel. I really do. Well, if you watched this all and made it this far, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. If anyone watches this and has read this book and wants to talk to me about this book, please do. I don't really have any friends who like stand this series of this world. And I evidently have a lot of feelings about it. So please let me know. If you for some reason have watched this and don't really care about the book, thank you for still being here. Nonetheless, if you're here just for Percy Jackson stuff, which a lot of people are, I promise some of that will be coming again. I'll always be making Percy Jackson videos, but I want to make other stuff too. We'll, we'll be reading Wayward Son next. I'm getting very excited for the third book that's coming out. I need to figure out the exact date that it's coming out and make sure that I have this reading vlog still on time, but ooh, I'm excited. Thank you for being here. I love you very much and I'll see you very soon. Mwah.